right, I think we're ready to go. Good morning. It is January 18th, 2018. My name is Jeff Fritz. Welcome back to Fritz and Friends. We're going to do some live coding today. We're going to do, hopefully, a little bit of pair programming. Po prayer, pair programming with some of you in the, in the chat. I want to get your comments, your feedback as I'm writing code here. And uh, hopefully we'll deliver an open source project or two by the time we're done the stream in about two hours today. Hey, good to see you, Bruno. Yes, I am Iron Fist today. I'm a big fan of the Marvel movies, the Marvel TV shows. Um, and I really like that logo for Iron Fist. Space Shot, Chris, thank you so much for the, um, for the hosting there. I'm guessing that's on Mixer. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, so, yes, today's hat, this is... It, my, my younger daughter is now my hat consigliere. These are the hats you have to wear, Dad. We're going to make sure you have something cool to wear. So, um, Iron Fist today with the cool under brim with the comic Iron Fist. Not that mm, TV show on Netflix. Mm. Good afternoon, Mr. Magoo. Um, so, Iron Fist, and I've also got the t-shirt to go with it. So, if my hands start glowing, you'll know what's going on. And actually, check that out. Woohoo! Chroma key! Look at the artifacts. So, I'm sitting down, I'm getting set up to do the stream. Put on the hat, put on the t-shirt. And I usually have a green screen behind me. And, uh, <laughs> I disappeared into the background. Literally, <laughs> You can see right through my shirt. You can see right through my head. It's like, ooh, that's a problem. <laughs> so fortunately, the green screen that I have has two sides. And one side is blue. One side is green. So I just turned it around, changed my chroma key, chroma key filter. And now we've got now we've got me wearing green on stream. So happy that I was able to make that slight adjustment. I got to load up on coffee here. Ooh, Grimbot. Welcome. Thank you for the follow. Um, and and good morning, good morning, Steve. Good to see, good to see you down there. Um, yes, the full set. Absolutely. I love the Bob Ross uh, <laughs> the Bob Ross emoji. That's nice. I need to. I I'm I'm technically an affiliate on Twitch. I should turn the the. I've been wanting to turn the .NET robot, the .NET bot, into an emoji that you can get as a subscriber on my channel um maybe i don't know i i need to think about that i'm like i've said before i'm not trying to encourage folks you know and uh, thank you for the hosting i that looks like it's over on twitch i appreciate that um so i'm not trying to say you know you folks need to subscribe or anything like that but for those of you that do i would want i do want to make sure that you get a little something um Arcuber, wow, thank you. Lots of followers here this morning. This is great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, a couple other things. Let's see. Let me. So, uh, oh, music to code by, of course, playing in the background, right? These, this is music from my friend Carl Franklin. Today we're playing Orange. This was released in 2015. I believe this was, yeah, this is on the first album. You'll actually get it for free if you download the music to flow by. Uh, app for your iPhone or Android, check it out, music to flow .com. So we've got that, that, that we're talking about. Um, th and thank you, Carl, for, for letting me get set up with that. Um, I noticed a Twitch partner and used my Amazon Prime free sub. Yes! So if you have Amazon Prime, you get a free subscription to Twitch streams. Um, you're welcome to, to use that here. If you do, um, Every dollar that, we, that that comes in, I will match. We'll donate it to Girl Develop It, and my employer will match it too. So you'll end up with a triple match. That's pretty cool, and I want to make sure that we support Girl Develop It. They want to help uh, women and underserved minorities learn how to code in a, in a in a great environment. So they're all over the nation, all over the world, I think. They have different chapters teaching folks how to code. Um, next piece of business I want to touch on before, before we get into the code, um, 
I am going to bring YouTube online as another syndication source because I want to make sure that folks can get can can watch the stream from there as well. Um, but what I'm what I'm up against here, what I'm looking at is I, I have this goal of 500 followers to um, to host the ASP.NET Core stream. I'm going to make the ASP.NET Core workshop stream the first stream that I co-host that I syndicate over to YouTube because I don't want to skew my numbers with people going and starting to follow over on YouTube and subscribe on YouTube when they're already on Twitch or Mixer. So it'll skew the numbers and it'll increase there a little bit quick, more quickly than I want it to. Um, be won't be as accurate. I know there's a little bit of duplication now. Some of you are on both Twitch and Mixer and you bounce back and forth depending on what, what device you're using. That's cool. That's great. Um, but I don't want to contaminated a little bit. TBD Gamer, thank you for the for the subscription. I appreciate that. Um, you know, very very much welcome that. Um, and like I said, I'm I don't want to keep your money. I'm not saying that I need that, but I'm I'm going to turn that around and, and make sure that gets to a charitable cause. Um, all right. So that's about YouTube Live. Last thing that I want to that I want to get into, I mentioned Discord the other day, right? And folks, folks have different places they go when they want to use, when they want to congregate as a community. Um, Slack is another one. Microsoft Teams for the corporate folks. Um, I certainly have a Teams subscription, but I can't invite everybody to join my Teams folder. That's hmm. um, but there's there's flexibility issues that I'm looking at, and there's things that I'd like to be able to do, and I want I, I settled on Discord. What was that? I just heard something swat. Oh, was that on Mixer? What happened there on Mixer? Maybe we can get the bot to pop up, post up every other hour with, that your sub support goes to charity. That's not bad. That's not a bad idea. That's the Mixer notification. Ah, okay, because I have Mixer open, because I'm about to post a link here. Um, stop it! <laughs> um, so here's so here's what I'm going to do. I'm I set up a an initial uh, Discord server, and um, I'm going to post the link to that server in both chat rooms. I'm not going to monitor the server while we're broadcasting. But I want to encourage you, if you want to hang out, you want to talk to some of the some of the friends that you've met chatting here on stream, you can you can check that out. Um, of course, if you mention me, I'll I'll see those and I'll I'll chime in. But I'm setting up two streams here, two channels. Um, it, <laughs> charitable equals hat collection. Huh, well, hang on, let me come back to that. I'm going to set up two channels to start, um, and let me just switch over here. There we go. See, that chroma key works with the green. <laughs> um, all right. So here's my Discord install. I set up a Fritz and Friends um, server. There's a general chat room here. Nothing's going on here yet. Hello, friends. Welcome to the server. Um, I'm going to want your help. I want, I'm going to... I'm not sure how to move forward with this, how to configure and what we want to do with it, but I'm going to share the link to this in both of the chat rooms so that, and then I'll post it, of course, on in the YouTube summary. So if you would like to chime in, if you would like to check it out, there you go. Seems OP, please nerf. <laughs> uh, so there we go. All right. So the one thing that I do want to point out, there is a projects on stream channel here that I have GitHub bots set up to post updates on issues, on push uh, pull requests that are created. So if you want to continue working on some of the projects, right now it's one channel. I might break it up into several channels later so that folks can... Um, folks can talk about them and, and work together if you'd like. And of course, we could set up voice channels if you'd like to, if you'd like to talk. So, um, I mean, the, the general channel here, why is that locked? That shouldn't be locked. Uh, da -da. Permissions. So I'm, I'm really not setting up and locking down anything yet. But check it out. Um, you could browse to it on the web and you can use it there. Or of course, 
install the app on your phone, your PC, whatever. So there you go. I am, and once again, I'm not going to be focused on Discord during the session. If there's something that comes up there, we can promote it, get it into GitHub, and we'll talk about it during during the live coding sessions. But I encourage you, um, if you want to hang out afterwards, there's some place to go. Thanks so much to uh, to J.R. Cook, uh, Eldorian, for recommending and, and pointing me in the right direction here to get things set up. So there we go. <clears throat> That's a little bit about the Discord server. Um, let's see. So, so Chris was saying, uh, get the bot to post up every uh, every other hour. That sub support goes to charity. Um, I think I can put that in on the front page or on my offline um, um, image that appears on both both services. I think we can make that happen. There's also there's also those sections on both Twitch and on Mixer that uh, that we can put links to Discord to some of those things in there. Um, I like Isaac's comment though. Charitable equals hat collection. Yes, we're. I'm. I'm not using it to expand my hat collection. Okay. That's something that the daughter is uh, certainly helping, helping out directing on her own. So follower counts at 468, almost there. 32 to go. We are going to get there, and I, and I still like. I has cheese hats. That's that is a great. Uh, great handle there on the on the event list over there on the side. All right, um, gosh, I don't even have I don't even have my machine remote connected yet. Let me let's let's get things moving here in the right direction. So I I normally remote desktop into my development machine here. Let's get that connected. And of course, because I changed my password. It never, remote desktop never remembers my password now. And we'll get connected over there. Fantastic. All right. We can close this. Anything else going on over here? Nope, nope, nope. Why do I have... I tried using a VNC server at one point with this. Let's get rid of that. Go away. All right. So I am... Okay, so the, the moderator thing went off there on Twitch. No problem. We're all right. Um, so um, some things that I want to discuss. I am working on um, I'm working on getting Glenn back, getting him back into the mix so we can do a stream with him because um, I know we have a couple ASP.net questions. Um, Glenn's been out sick for the past week. He's really feeling it. So uh, he thinks we're, he's going to be back back in the office today, tomorrow. And we're going to set up probably Tuesday to try and have him back on the stream. And um, I've locked down. I've confirmed Myra Wenzel will be joining us on Thursday next week. That's Thursday the 25th. And um, we're going to be talking about documentation, the Microsoft Docs online, and how how we can contribute to it. Now, it is, it is part of my job to contribute to it. I'm just saying. And Myra is. She's she's really great. And uh, I'm going to just walk through the process with her. I'm going to have an article all typed up about configuration builders. We'll get some feedback from her, some editing, and we'll see what it's like to submit and get something published here right on stream. Um, and I'm also doing a tech check tomorrow with uh, Sarah Saduki. Um, she's Sarah Dukevich on uh well, she's Saduki on Twitter, but she's Sarah Dukevich from um, from Ohio. We're going to be doing a little bit of web usability around our stream tools. So I'm going to be going through, checking that out, talking about um, what we can do to improve that, getting some tips, some pair programming with Sarah, and we'll have that scheduled. It won't be next week. The week after, I'm in Seattle, um, but we're definitely going to get that on the schedule. So that's what's coming up. Um, let's open uh, let's open my browser here. All right, we need to make sure we have a browser hanging out here. There we go. Um, all right, back to GitHub because I live on GitHub. Um, we're going to be working in configuration builders today. I want to take a look at stream tools and of course live stream. These all have hooks. You should be able to see information. Um, 
about what's going on in these projects in the Discord channel as we move along, as folks submit changes. Um, all right, so stream tools. I don't think there's anything new in here. Consider using auto fixture to improve setup and unit test. So when I get done the YAML builder, and I think I'm pretty close to getting it done, this is what I'd like to do on the second half of our stream today. Um, and of course over here, so we're gonna finish the YAML configuration builder today. Um, and I, I have an open question to, to Imo right now. Um, have him come on, talk about, we'll talk about spans, .NET standard. Um, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for confirmation from him on a good time and we'll get that squared away. I'm so, uh, Myra here, let's do this. Um, our, there we go. Ah, what happened? I'm talking up how cool it will be when we pair program on the stream next week. We're looking forward to it. And uh, let's say live jeffreyfritz.com because that's the easiest way to get online. All right. There we go. Cool. So that's what I'm using to monitor what all is going on out there in the big, big world. All right. Next. Um, so let me close Mixer. I'm going to keep that one up. All right. So we're going to finish the YAML configuration builder. And then we'll take a look at using auto fixture. So the last couple things that were in the uh, list of feature suggestions that Christian had for us over here. Uh, da, 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 da. Wow, lots of chatter on Twitter about this. That's really great. Encourage your friends to come over. Let's get to that ASP.NET Core workshop. Let's get that scheduled. And then I'm going to need to run a poll to figure out, do we want to do it on a Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday? Not sure. Maybe even do it on a Friday when folks are in office and you can kind of have an all day, let's, um, let's learn together thing. Not sure. All right. So let's talk about features we need to add to this configuration builder. And for those of you that aren't familiar, configuration builders are a feature that was added in .NET Framework 471. Um, I've actually got a little bit of a blurb there on the front of, on the front of this, uh, this repository, right? Um, configuration builders for 471. You can install these features with NuGet. Project contains configuration builders for you to be able to consume and work with. You know what? I don't have an entry in here for the RSS files. For RSS. Um, <laughs> let's do this before I get too far into this. First off, gosh, I need to run my command shell need to have that here all right there we go you know what that green looks really sharp on stream look at that I look amazing I normally say I've got a face for radio but wow all right um let me go into uh that's not how you spell my name there we go let's open powershell fantastic um, I'm going to update, I want to update this readme real quick so it has an entry for RSS, RSS streams. Let's do that. So I'm going to just pop open readme here real quick. And there's actually an edit button right here in GitHub. And I'm going to add RSS streams. Is it RSS streams or RSS feeds? Let's say feeds. I think that works. Added uh, reference to RSS feeds. Sure. There we go. All right. Feeds. Cool. Hey, thanks, Cryptrix. Crypt. Yeah, Cryptrix. Make sure I say that right. Uh, okay. So uh, let's go back to the issue and let's 
talk about what's going on here. So the configuration builder lets us bring in configuration into our normal configuration manager we have in .NET Framework and be able to reference those things as a configuration section or our app settings or connection strings. So we've already got the ability to bring in data from any files because people love any files. Carl and Richard on .NET Rocks loved that we built this. So, um, what's with the bang up time there, uh, Dunks R Us? I don't think, I have Nightbot. Nightbot should be wired up and listening over here on Twitch. Right? That's not how you spell Nightbot. Nightbot. He's not there. Nightbot disappeared. There it is. And a list of all my commands. And I think my commands are a little bit out of date. I haven't updated it. Uh, yeah, I need to update. Gosh. Well, that'll give you a link to the GitHub. I should put a... Here, let's do this. Let's do this. Make sure that everybody has access to this. I should add a command here for... Um, I gotta log in to Nightbot first, right? Get that done. Uh, yep. I'm who I say I am. There we go. I should edit this second one. Why can't I edit? Uh, ta -ta -ta. Commands, yeah. I don't want to do song requests. Song requests just feels weird. Yes, manage this one. Why can't I edit commands? Uh, I think it's because that's a beta. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna... There we go. There we go. Commands. Custom. There we go. Alright. Configuration builders. Uh, da, 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 da. let's you know what? Let's just get rid of this one. I don't. I'm not thrilled with that command. But we do want to add Discord. Join the stream Discord channel at. And then where's that Discord link? Do I still have Discord open? I do. Uh. <laughs> Copy. Cool. And user level everyone. Five second cooldown. Nah. I'm going to bump that out to like a minute. Fantastic. All right. So now you should be able to do bang discord in channel over on Twitch. And it'll give you information about the discord channel. Fantastic. All right. Go away, Twitch. Cool. Back to the configuration builder. This is like... There you go. That's nah, not going to respond to you, Yolzar. Got to give it a minute. All right. So, this configuration builder, this feature that we're adding, will allow us to read YAML files and update those various configuration sections in our .NET configuration. So we can still, still use our normal configuration interaction without having to write any special code in our applications to be able to read and consume from YAML or any files or RSS. I do the same thing with environment variables. There's one specifically from my team about environment variables. So this one, we're gonna do YAML files. And the next requirement that we're looking at here is support mapping sections in a web config hierarchy to corresponding sections in a YAML file. So the idea here is I want to be able to have different sections in the YAML file that are applied to different areas of, of your config. So let's, let's talk that through for a second because I think I understand exactly what this is describing. 
All right, let's make that go away. Here's my testing down here. I don't want the any files. I want to show the YAML ones. There we go. This is what I think this is describing. Then we can dig a little bit further into here. Is that um, for my YAML configuration builder, I want to be able to specify, right? I have sections that we specify in YAML because they're different nested areas, okay? So, yeah, Mixer doesn't doesn't have Nightbot hooked up. Um, and that's, an, that's another thing that feels bad to me, is there are these great bots that are out there for, um, for Twitch, but you can't hook them up to... Here, where is it? Settings can't hook them up to um, to Mixer. So that feels weird, right? I'm not, I'm not thrilled with that, right? Integrations. So I can integrate Nightbot with Discord. I can enter it, integrate it with Muxy, with StreamTip, but I can't do it, and it lags processing chat. Um, it's not a local process. Nightbot is actually hosted and centralized out there on, um, oh, Scorebot, yes, is a local process, yes. So, as a possible other project that we can look at is, let's write our own bot and host it out there on Azure and be able to point that to whatever we want to integrate with, because all of these things are nothing more than just IR IRC streams. So when people hype the chat, it slows down. Uh, Nightbot slows down. Yeah. Sure. Because it's analyzing everything. Um, I get it. All right. Um, so my YAML file, the idea that I'm hearing on this feature, coming back to that discussion, is that... I want to be able to have a section that's like at, called app settings and another another and another section called connection strings in my YAML file and I want to be able to pull those and assign those to different sections in my application. Jeffbot, that's a great name. F not, not Jeffbot, Fritzbot. Ha <laughs> ha! And then you could truly say, my stream is on the Fritz. Um, my eyes are blue, maybe transparent blue screen for the wind. Really? Am I going transparent? I can't, so here's the, I can't look at OBS and myself at the same time. Is this transparent? There, that's, nope, that's blue, that's all right. How about, here, here's a Rubik's Cube. Is this blue? How's that blue? You can see, whoa! All right, that's weird. Anything else I have blue here that's kind of cool to play with? I'm so easily distracted here. I'm sorry. I think there's a bot already named Fritz. Something else. Uh, kind of like to figure out a good .NET way to stay performant and not feels like it's so lagged. Okay. It's not bad. Not a bad idea. Um, it's, it's really a question of when you write a bot, you want it to respond within like a half a second so that it comes out really quick. But that's not what we're talking about today. If you want to talk further about that, want to figure more about that, let's talk about that in the Discord and then let's open and let's talk about that on the live stream. You know, when we have, here's what we want to do. Let's put on the, on the live stream, um, items over here and I actually project ideas. Um, I didn't write it in here. Chat bot. There we go. Run on Azure. Use Lewis. Maybe even Cortana Alexa skills. That would be cool. And, um... I've actually talked to my friend uh, Dave Voiles about working on a chatbot at some point. Maybe I can talk him into joining us. Um, so we'll see about that. 
All right. I want to get back into this YAML thing. Enough distractions. Time to focus. Um, so I want to be able to have different sections of my YAML file that I want to allocate to different areas of my application. And right now I have a very simple name value pair approach here to this YAML file. That's not bad. For, for extremely simple configuration, that works. But what I'd really like to do is be able to specify, you know what, only apply this section or um, be able to do some of those nesting keys like they do in .NET Core to be able to reference and use those as my keys inside of my various sections and whatnot through the file. All right, so let's try adding another, well, let's, let's define another YAML file here. And I don't think I have YAML templates, no, right? No, I don't have YAML templates. Are there YAML templates for Visual Studio? I feel like there should be. Hmm. Come here. YML. Is there a YML? No, there's no template for it. That feels weird. All right. Somebody should write a YAML template. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a text file then, I guess, right? Let's call this sections why I'm... Rats. Try this again. Add new item. Text. Find me the text file. There it is. Let's call this sections YML. That's better. All right. Now, YAML files start with these three hyphens, and then we go, we can start defining different things going on here, right? So if we want to define app settings, right? And then um, we could have setting one, value one, setting two, value two. And then I could have a different section, right? Uh, connection strings and I'm just naming them these because that's kind of what it um, it's it, right they kind of match the, the general look and feel that I'm going for right so I think that's a I think that's an, a valid initial set of sections here right that feels like a valid YAML file right I think it is a valid YAML file Right, I only need the hyphens when I just have values underneath these things, right? If I want to do that stuff. But these are all name value pairs, so I don't want to have that hanging around. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm on the right path here with these, right? Am I good? Okay. Um, so I, I want to make sure that this is packaged and delivered. You know what? It's a file that's included. I want to capitalize it. And I want to make sure that this is embedded. Embedded resource. Do not copy. Because I, I want to make sure that as my, as my test project moves and is executed in different places, my files, my test files, are located where I need them to. On the YAML thing, I hear that they are integrating it with TFS build. Are there any plans to generate a YAML script from an existing build? I have no idea. I'm not familiar with what the folks are doing over on TFS. We could certainly ask. So. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, th here's an interesting comment I just saw f float across on Twitter. Um, it's very interesting that a cloud executive vice president is doing live coding on stage. That's the boss. That's uh, that's Scott Guthrie, and he's not just a, a cloud executive. He was the ASP.NET program manager, which I am now. So I think I've got a good career path. Oh, and the cloud executive before Scott, some guy named Satya. So, good career path planning there. I think I've landed in the right spot. <laughs> All right, but I'm. I'm just a program manager streaming here. Anyways, so it, it, um, it, I want to make sure you know. It, I see some new folks in the in in the chat room. 
you know, go ahead and, and click that follow button. Let's let's push towards this ASP.NET Core workshop. Tell your friends, tell your families, tell your pets. You know, let's get there. We're so close. 32, 32 followers away. Oh my gosh. And I've and I do have a goal that I'm setting up for a thousand. Um, I do have a very special guest who's agreeing to, to come on and do a pair programming if we get to a thousand. So we'll see about that one. Um, so here's my simple YAML file that I'm going to start building my tests against. Now with these configuration builder project, this configuration builder project, I think I've got a nice structure, excuse me, for doing um, test first, a test first approach, right? I've got a great set of tests here to go through. Uh, that's right, we're getting very close to the workshop. So I think I've got a nice set of features here. But let's let's push a little bit further on this and let's let's add this section capability so I can say, you know what? Only include settings from underneath this section. Right? So right now in if you look at the sample for this, right? When I include a configuration builder, and you can do this with the other ones that we have available out there, um, environment variables, JSON files, um, Azure Key Vault, you can do this already. You add a configuration section that says, I have configuration builders, and we'll actually create this for you when you install the, um, the NuGet package. I probably should do that with my NuGet package too. Joe the Pro, how, how's it going? Welcome. Um, things are going great. <coughs> We're writing code. Um, and inside your config builder section, right, you define what the builders are you're going to reference that are going to add and build out the rest of your configuration here. So um, I want to be able to, in order to do this section capability, I want to be able to do something like Right, add name equals uh, YAML section app settings mode equals greedy. Now, I'll talk about mode in just a second. Um, equals section YML and then type equals, and then I'm just going to copy in the type because I don't feel like typing all that again. And but I want to be able to specify this is the app settings section. So I feel like I want to be able to have section app settings. So then I could do something like come over here and call this uh, uh, YAML section app settings and have it apply that settings collection here. Does restart on an external change reload the file like ASP.NET Core? No, it does not. Um, that's, that's a level of hook that we didn't put into this because these things are being loaded and pulled in by your code that you're adding in. Um, I suppose we could make something like that happen. Um, that's not a bad idea. I feel like it almost should be a switch on this. I think I'm going to take that back to my to my colleague Steve. What do you think? Make that an option. Configuration builders reload on change. I do like that idea. Um, so let me take that back to the team. I think that's going to re the the challenge is it requires a change to the configuration manager so that the configuration manager knows to look for these things and I almost want to have an event raised here that says trigger this because if you think about things like the Azure Key Vault configuration builder I don't want to monitor Azure Key Vault and trigger all my applications to restart but on something like an any file okay that makes sense RSS configuration mm, no um, user secrets sure that makes sense so I think that's something we may want to to discuss and make it make it an option, a configuration option, configuration options for configuration. That's not confusing. Um, oh, you know what? You know what I'm thinking here? When this runs, it's going to crash because it's not going to find this thing. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's going to be a problem. Let's, um... And I think the any file has the same problem. Right? Do, 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 do. Thought I just saw it. Yeah, it throws a configuration errors exception if the location is missing. So the the any file one is assuming that location needs to exist. Um so I'm think okay. I feel like do we need another Let me start this wrapping a little bit more. Uh fail on missing equals false. Oh no, let's let's call this required. Mm. I want to be able to put another configuration option in here that says if the file is missing, if the file doesn't exist, if the file doesn't exist, don't fail. Fail silently. Don't do anything with that. Or throw it to true and fail hard. Let's call it required. Let's start there. Um, so I'm going to go back to... Is it here? No, required fields. Here it is. Missing location attribute should throw exception. So here's, right, here's my test that says that the location is required. Now I want to turn this around and I want to include this required option. In ASP.NET Core config, it's called optional. Fantastic. Thank you for, for reminding me on that. Let's not call it required. Let's turn it around and make it optional equals true. And and is it is it um, is optional? Is that does it default true or is that default false? I can't remember. Configuration. It's this one here, add JSON file. Yeah. I thought it, optional was, uh, at, let's see, let's, I don't want file. I want to find add JSON file. I want to find that API. Uh, not in there. No. Hmm. Let's look at this one. File provider. Yeah, and then you could specify your different formats. We have to go a little bit different because we're bolting on to um, configuration manager in this case. I don't think that's, I don't think I'm in the right area. Not at all. Hmm. Add JSON file. I think optional is false by default. So let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna come back over here. So I will, um, yeah. So that shouldn't break this. So let me go back to the YAML configuration builder and let's add an optional property here. Public, not vool, bool optional, get private set is the file required. If not, um, fail silently. Okay. Um, and I will create a optional tag here, just so I'm not carrying that magic string around. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So during initialize, name config. Okay, so we want to say this dot optional equals config optional tag. Now, config optional tag is going to return a um, 
yeah, it's a string, so we need to do a bool dot parse on that. Bool parse. Oh, I should do a try parse on that, shouldn't I? Hmm. Mm. Fine. If bool try parse. And out into this optional. There we go. Now, uh, yeah, it won't let me pull it into that. So let's say, uh, I ooh, ooh, right? I should be able to say out bool uh, opt value. Right? Why won't it let me do that? Oh, okay, fine. It was my editor config rule there, chiming in. Um, then I want to take this dot optional equals opt value, and that shouldn't break any of my tests. Cool. So it's gonna try to parse that and it's gonna put it in there. Um, and I'm going to say, right, this defaults to false. Um, how do you define the default value? defaults to false works for me all right so now by default optional is false so I'm gonna now change this if statement to say if not optional and the string is null or empty we'll do this fail quickly there we go else if optional and um, if it is optional and the string is null or empty this location return do nothing fail now okay add a couple extra spaces in here Make it a little bit more readable. All right. Fail quickly if the file presence is required. All right. Uh, okay. So now down in here I feel like I also now want to have a private value that says skip me oh well the YAML document will still be null let's default that to null right because it didn't get through and finish this so let's do this if YAML doc equals null return um I don't want to return null because that's going to break things um I want to return an empty collection let's just do this new key value pair string string Like that. I want it to be an array. Um, hmm. Right? How do I do an array of those things? Ah, oh, that's what I was missing. Now that should. Yep. All right. Didn't break any tests. So I'll do the same thing in my other method over here. 
Except instead of returning a string, we'll just return empty string. You don't have to set the YAML doc to null explicitly. It is done implicitly by default. You're correct, Joe the Pro. However, um, by setting it to null by default, it actually allocates memory for it. Um, that was something I I've saw some of my uh, language friends on the team look at. So, um, I could have done zero also. Yeah, I could have done that. So, let's just put a quick note in here. Um, fail quickly if there is no YAML doc. All right. Um, nope, I don't want that because this is just one line. I'm going to copy and paste this comment up here also. Okay, so I haven't broken... I haven't broken my existing configuration, my existing features. Now let's add a test just to make sure that it works properly the other way. Um, so let's... I'm just going to copy this one, this test. And I'm going to call this missing location when optional should not throw exception. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't want to do an assert throws. Um, I want to do like assert doesn't throw. So actually, I could just do sut initialize here. Right now, that should fail. Right. Okay. So, um, right, I'm, I'm running these tests, and th these tests I'm running with in unit. Um, arrange and act. So I'm setting up my app settings section. I have a name value collection of parameters that I'm passing in. And I'm initializing my YAML configuration builder. But my collection of settings, I want to actually specify that it's optional. So the way that I do that in my other tests is I actually specify like this. Okay. Now, instead of location tag, I'm going to go get the optional tag. And instead of specifying a config file location, I'm going to say optional is true. Uh, it needs to be a string. That's right. That's right. There we go. And that should pass. Fantastic. All right. So we now know that optional doesn't fail out on the initialize. So I think that's... I think that's good. I think, um, hmm. do I need to write some tests? What's it upset about over here in Greedy? Uh, once this changed, fine. There we go. Um, do I need to write some tests to ensure that it fails fast when it's actually reading? I'm not going to dig into that. I, I don't need that level of coverage. I want to get back into the other features. But we wanted to make sure that the optional, which is actually this one, option to skip YAML builder if its source file doesn't exist. So we just finished that. All right. So we have the optional capability. Um, and the last one I wanted to do is specify a section so it knows what section to read settings from. Okay, so I'm going to add another class here. And this one I will call, uh, let's just call it sec, uh, yeah, um, section. All right, let's call it, um, when section configured. Yeah. All right. Public. Give me an extra space here. I wish I could specify these extra spaces that I like in my file. Uh, and this is a test fixture. Control dot to bring that in. 
and I'm going to inherit from my base YAML fixture. So this base YAML fixture specifies, here's what's the config file name that I'm using for this. And I'm going to return sections.yaml so that it knows how to go and read that for me. All right. And now I can start writing my tests because my tests with this abstract class that I'm using will be able to find that file. I have a config file location that I'll be able to point to and load um, load my configuration from. Cool. I see some friends chatting up the, the stream there on Twitter. Not bad. Thank you, Wade. No more follows yet this morning. All right, that's fine. I know we had a number of them while we were uh, while we were offline since Tuesday. Uh, let's see here. So let me go over to. I'm going. You know what? Let's let's cheat and let's copy and paste again. So I don't really need to be able to test for reading section reading from the file because I already know we know how, we know how to do that. Um, and let me rename this test file when section configured should um, should read only from that section right there we go um, we need to bring in some of these configuration things there's that we need name value collection yep need the YAML configuration builder. Okay, so it's failing now. Why is it failing? While scanning the next token, find character that cannot start any token. <sighs> Here's where I'm, I'm gonna need some help from you in the chat room. Um, Parsing apart these YAML files is a little bit tricky. Because the YAML library that we're using is... is I don't feel it's terribly friendly. So, I... I yeah. I'm not sure. This, this could be a little dicey here as we write this. When scanning for the next token, find character that cannot start any token. Uh, hmm. Okay. I think I'm... Line three, column one, index nineteen. Sees. Let's look at this. Sections YAML. When scanning for the next token, find character that cannot start any. I know nothing about YAML. Is it structured in the, structured in the same way with start close tags? No, it's structured with tabs actually. Which. It's a little strange, but it works. Um, not, hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Um. All right. I'm um, not sure. I'm getting a little confused here why this is erroring out when it's trying to fetch the next token. Because, right, this looks like valid YAML syntax. 
And I'm even getting the syntax highlighting indicating it, right? I can't... I mean, I could do a hyphen. But I don't think you need to. Right, now if I tell this... Run again. Right, it's recompiling. There it goes. No, still doesn't like it. Uh, all right, let me get rid of these. Let's come back to that. I have a feeling there's a problem in my... Um, I have a feeling there's a problem inside my YAML reader process. Let, okay, let's come back to that. Um, I want to specify that I am going to read... Let's create a section tag, because we already specified that. And that we will read from app settings. Um, and we need to actually create the section tag in our YAML configuration builder. So let's put that here. Pub public const string section tag equals section. Okay. Um, so we're still okay there. Good. Right. The, the proposed syntax here is I want to be able to say section equals app settings, and it's looking for that section of this file. So it's going to go find that app settings section and then read those things. I have a, you know what? I have a feeling that my, yeah, my configuration builder is actually kind of assuming one level of syntax. All right, so when I initialize um, test, that's fine. And then my collection of settings, and I want to make sure that it only applies to, that it applies those app settings to that section. Um, <clears throat> so in sections YAML, I have setting one is value one, so I expect to get value one coming back, but I'm erroring out here. Cool. So, the problem that I've got is that I'm not, I'm not managing hierarchical configuration files yet. Okay. So, um, this is great because the live, the the live unit testing will actually help us with this. Um, so it's not in get all values. So we're okay there. Where's the error? Um, there, it's on the parser load when he's going to read it. Gosh, it's not even when it's... Hmm. Interesting. So, it... Uh... So it's trying to read my file and it's and it's balking when scanning for the next token on line three. Find character that cannot it finds a character that cannot start any token. All right, let's do this. So I'm going to defer to the experts here. Let's look at here's what. YAML syntax looks like, right? So just to make sure that we're on the same page, right? So it starts with three dashes, and then you can have some information after it. That's fine. And then we have name value pairs, and then you nest underneath of it. You said it uses tabs. Do you actually have tabs in there? Is line three the line I think it is? Maybe not. Hmm. Um, let's take a look here. About. Welcome. Interesting. Oh, there's C Sharp. Yeah, YAML.net is the one I'm using. YAML.net. And it it's it it does feel very unforgiving. Um let's 
control tab to open that. <clears throat> uh, let's look at the spec. Look at that. Feels very W3C. Um, goals, prior art, terminology, processing YAML, YAML information, blah, 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 blah. Syntax conventions. Ugh. Ugh. Character encodings. Come on now. Hmm. Indicators are characters that have special semantics. Block structure indicators. Oh my gosh. Flow collection indicators. Oh, should I have brackets around these? No. I think that's optional. Comment indicator. So comments are with a hash mark. Node property indicators. Mm. Block scalar indicators. Okay, that's not terrible. Block quoted indicators. Uh, okay. Directive indicator. No. Invalid use of reserved indicators. White space. I just wanted freaking collection here, right? It says line three, column one to column two, which suggest, it suggests it's not seeing tabs. Hmm. You're suggesting I need to replace these with spaces. I'll rerun it. Nope. Um, error in configuration builder. Oh, wait a sec. No, I'm further along. I'm on line 24 now. Oh, it, that's my test. Da, 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 da. Stack trace. Get value internal. String key. Okay. It's in the middle of get value string key. No, it didn't even get down there. It's a... Hang on. Wait, this is telling me that it is at get value string key. Right, which is down in here. But it's not giving me a line number for that. There we go. Line 110. There. Okay. All right. Now I think we're getting somewhere. Um, tabs have been outlawed since they are treated differently by different editors and tools. Oh, that feels like a violation. All right, so let's let's do this to make sure that we don't make that mistake again. Star dot yml indent style space. Uh, indent size two. Cool. So now we can kind of force that and, and make sure that I do my uh, my configuration properly. Thank you. Thanks, Joe Bun. I appreciate you digging that up for me. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Okay. I'm like keeping my eye on three different things at once here. It's like tennis match. Um, so back over here. So if I put a space here and save, yeah, let's let that rerun. And when scanning for the next token, so that's telling me that it doesn't like the sections, even though I just fixed and redid all that spacing. Let's, let me take a look at the live unit testing. I thought there was a way to tell it to yeah, delete the persisted data. Configure it. CDEV.VS. Ha ha. So in the .VS, there's this. There's the live unit testing. 
and it's it's work actually doing the work in here is where it's actually saving and doing its work and there's that's cool there's a lot too I'm gonna nuke this and let's let it rerun again so that it does copy over and rebuild things and we get uh, fresh content that it's building and working with so come on live unit testing or have I angered it go.editor config yeah I know right hmm is there anything on the not in the error list output Hmm. Life unit testing. There we go. Build completed. Failed. Well, that makes me feel bad. Um, errors. Yeah, tell me about it. There's errors. Delete them. Uh, tests. Life unit testing. Stop. Start. When in doubt, stop everything and restart everything, right? There we go. Now it's writing. Ha <laughs> ha! Go and rebuild. Go, go, go. Fatal error. Could not find part of the path. Yeah, that's right. Because I got rid of it. Hmm. Zero T. There's nothing there. Now I've done it. Stop. I'm just going to completely delete that LUT folder. Live unit testing. Start. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Build tested. That's where I'm expecting to see it. There we go. Error while processing config section in configuration builder test. Fantastic. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Now we're talking. That's the way I planned it. Kind of. Okay. <clears throat> this is where it gets dicey. Unit testing. Well, not just unit testing, but parsing this thing. Right? So it's erroring out here while processing config section. Error in configuration builder. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. Okay, so that's telling me, well, let's do this. Let's um, actually debug that test and see what it has when we get here. Um, don't need that, don't need that. There we go. So at this point, found pair is nothing. There's nothing there. It did not find, it did not find this mapping node that we needed right it found it found the an app settings node it found setting one value one setting two value two and it found well zero is the root right yeah okay um one this is the collection of things inside <clears throat> excuse me inside the app settings and this is the stuff inside of connection strings <clears throat> excuse me so one um if i look at all nodes this is okay so there it is played out okay i like this i like being able to kind of spelunk in through all the different things that are going on here so i can see what's actually going on 
So there's the two child values, but it's not, it's not telling me, it's not showing me that this is the app settings element. So this is good. This is good. I, I think I understand something here. If I, if I'm reading this right, I, my mapping nodes are just a collection of all the mapping elements, right? Mapping being pair to pair right? A uh, key value pair, right? Is what they're calling a mapping. So these are mappings. Okay. Um, I need to find those nodes that aren't mapping, right? Because when I'm dealing with a section, when I'm working with a section, I want to get the, I want to get the elements that are I want to find the name of that section and then find the mapping nodes inside of it. What do you think? Does that make sense? Do you think I'm down the right path? Let me know in the chat. That's the direction I'm going to go, which means I kind of need two different ways to approach this. And I'm not doing anything in, in that get all values yet. We'll come back to that one. Okay. So this is failing because the key that I'm looking for, setting one, isn't there. Mapping nodes zero is the top level section. Uh, mapping nodes zero um, is the top level element right it's it's the entire document is what i'm seeing right so it's my app settings and then my connections uh da -da -da -da. let's do this let me grab this let me grab that that let me grab the zero with item here and pin that love being able to do that okay so there's that thing okay and it's got two children right and those children those are the individual items um so two children are the sections yes recursively scan through it i don't want to scan through recursively scan through it i want to say find this section and then give me the mapping nodes underneath of it um which means i think i need where's my sections yaml file not that one no no I've got a couple of files open here, don't I? Mm, there it is. Don't need the any file. Don't need that one. This one. Right, so... So this one, this zero with element, is the entire document. Um, while recursively scanning through it might work, what I want to do is I want to find that section. So what I'm going to do... I think I'm going to... I think I want to branch here and I want to say if well hang on I'm not handling the section tag yet I'm not looking for a section yet yeah if YAML doc supports it and I think it does um, but I, I need to capture that section here let's make sure we do that public string section get private sets And let's default that to the empty string. Um, do, 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 do. So location. So I'm hand. This is all that location logic. Um, and then I'll handle section. So let's say section equals uh, <laughs> config section tag. Right. So if there is um yeah that should be fine right and i'm i'm failing right now because it's not able to build because where's my thing there this thing let's make sure it can still build and my other unit tests still work good um it still handles my simple scenario so all right if section if not string is null or empty section return get value from 
section, and I will pass it the key. Yeah, and let's pass the section also. And we'll create this method. So that, um, right, I've got all the logic to manage that somewhere else. And what I should really do is move this into, yeah, let's move this. Yep, extract method, and we'll call this get value from, from, key value pair. YAML doc documentation is bad. Yeah, it, it yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So get value from key value pair. I think that works. Get value from section. This is where we need to do our work. So throw not implemented, but I'm gonna do a lot of very similar work here. So I'm just gonna copy out what's here as a starting point. Right? Let's see. Paste that in. All right, so matching node is where I go and I say, give me the, give me the first node. And I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to actually find the first node that has the same, uh, the same key. What's the name of the music playing right now? Hey, player. Um, the music that we're playing, and uh, gosh, there's something I could put on Nightbot. Um, the song we're playing, this is called Orange, from Music to Code By, um, from my friend Carl Franklin. Um, I need to figure out a way to do this. mtcb.pwop.com. Uh -huh. This is Music to Code By, and you can get all of the music for... The, each one of these is 25 minutes long, but for 40 bucks you can get the entire collection. Or, of course... Music to flowby.com. You can get the app and get all this stuff on a subscription basis. And he's adding new songs all the time. And I really want the new song he just added. It's really cool. Um, all right. Back to this. So where I'm grabbing the root node and I'm saying, go give me all nodes... Right, that, and I'm and I start down, and I'm saying, all right. And I'm not even using this matching node, am I? Am I using this anywhere else? I don't think I am. Right. Um. Right. If I got rid of that, it should still work. Yeah. Don't need no stinking. All right. So this is going off the root node and saying, let's get rid of that. Right. So the root node is the top of the document. And it's saying, go find me all nodes where the node type equals mapping. I don't want that. I want to get the first node where it has the same. My, ah, mm. my root node is the same as the node that has my section name. And I might be able to reuse this element at that point. Ooh. Okay, hang on. So, I think we've got this. I think we got this. I think I can simplify this significantly. Let's call it section node. And it's gonna be YAML doc root node I don't want to, can I say children? If I say all nodes, right? So when, when it hits, let's put a breakpoint here and let's debug this. And let's take a look at what's inside that all nodes. And then I should be able to construct what this is gonna look like to go find my individual thing. So when I say all nodes, right? So now I've got all of these things and it's this app settings one what is what is this this is a scalar node type
Okay. So. So let's let's do some exploring there. I'm going to bring out on the immediate window here. I'm actually going to move it up a little bit so we can so we can see it here on stream. I normally like to have it docked on the bottom, but so that we can see it. Hey, where's my immediate window? Go join your friends there. Thank you. All right. So now I'm going to just I just want to tinker around in here. So if I look at section node and I say first let's say first or default, right? So I'm uh, not section, uh, mm, those are, these are all of the nodes underneath the root node. Okay, so I want n dot, right? I want n dot node type equals, and it was, um, yep, YAML node type. Okay, and it was, uh, uh, was it a scalar? Is that what it was? So it got me my... F oh, okay. If I just... Ch let's change this to a where. Okay. So it's saying these are all scalar. That's not what I want. Hmm. Let's take a look at that again. So I'm going to mouse over all nodes so I can see and peek into this thing. It's this block right here. Right, this is a this is a mapping node. But it it doesn't have a tag. It has two children. Right, and those two children are the two settings. So many times I drag windows into the main code editor space. Yeah. This is what VS Tool windows are missing. A pin this window here and never allow it to be moved. <laughs> um Let's see, if I say all nodes on this one, so I get the top level and I get these, what I want is I want to, I want to get this thing, which is, a, it is it's, it's the label, right? Each one of these labels is a scalar, right? It's almost like I want to grab this one and say children, and then here, this is the thing I want right there. I want this one, which has a key. Ah. Let's get this zero with one. Right, so if we say section node zero dot children, you stink. All right, first children. Does not contain a reference to children. What do you have? Hmm? Um, well, what's under all nodes of that one? I know it'll enumerate the innumerable. That's what I asked for you, pain in the neck. All right, hang on. Results view, I want the zero width item. And it won't let me access the children collection. Why not? So if I go all nodes... See, I'm, and I'm back at this thing. If I can get into children, then I can grab that. Okay. So, um, section node. So there is no children there. If I say first, so now I have a, it's, it's, that's the same as all nodes. dot root node all nodes right I mean that doesn't give me anything but it, okay root node all nodes gives me the collection then if I if I grab the first one right yeah the first one is the same as the root node so that doesn't actually get me anything. So if I say YAML doc root node and well if I say YAML doc all nodes and I say the zero with one 
that's that's actually the root node. Right? If I do this. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> Alright. Figure that one out. That feels a little bit better. So if I say all nodes and I say what I want is I want to skip one and I want the first. Okay, so this is this is the app settings element. But I can't but I haven't picked up right so It's a scaler, and it's got more... See, this doesn't make sense to me. Um... Right, so this... Right, so I'm actually grabbing this one. That's not what I want. Because that this is literally the tag. I want to be able to grab this children object because then I can actually, right, grab these things. Right, root node. You know what, it's like it doesn't know that it's a... Hmm. All right, let's... YAML.net. There were some samples here that we might be able to learn from. So this is Antoine Aubrey. Antoine, if you're out there, we could use your help. I don't want to serialize or deserialize. I want to load. Root node. Here we go. So mapping. This is a YAML mapping node. And he grabs the root node. And then he can walk through the children. All right, let's take a look at this. So, right, because the root, so, all right, let's, here we go. I'm gonna dock this back on the bottom. And now let's, let's go into this a little bit here. Um, so if we turn this into a uh, YAML mapping node on that. Okay. Root node. Then what I should uh, call this sections. No, I wait. Oh, oh. I should be able to say. Right, I should be able to say root node children. Ha ha. First, first or default. So now I'm right off the root and I'm looking at the children and I want to say um, yeah, it does look weird. Key equals my key. Uh, wait a sec. Uh, key is a, it's a YAML node itself. Key dot tag. And now this all is kind of broken. Uh, uncomment that one. Uncomment that one. Save. Um, can I, can someone help me out there on the mi on the mixer?
hate moderating, but it needs to be done. Where was I? I'm going to put the breakpoint down here and let's take a look. Let's run this unit test. There we go. All right, so what's my section node? It's empty. All right, so if we look at the children, so we've got two of these, and I want to go where the key... The key's a string. Oh, the tag... I want to do key dot value. All right, let's change that. Yeah, I don't have value here because it's a scalar. All right, so we gotta we gotta do this double check now, I guess. N dot key is a YAML node. Um, is YAML scalar node. Oof. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and uh, da, 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 YAML scalar node. N dot key. Man. There we go. Value equals that. And that should give me my section node. Fantastic. I got all the way out to the test. That's a little bit better. I'm feeling better about that. Um... All right, here we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So when I... Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. I should be able to do console right line section node. And I should be able to see that pop up here in my output. Uh, da -da -da -da. Output. So I actually got, what is that? Hmm. Let's debug and hit that again. Okay, so section node is empty. Rats. Rats. Root node, children. Okay. So each one of the children is key value pair. And I want to find it where the key has a value that matches. When you're viewing the live debug watches, right click and choose copy expression to get some code to the value you're inspecting. Saves guessing. Uh, look at that. So if I right click here, damn, I never knew you could do that. Holy crap. Learn something new. All right, so now if I paste that, holy cannoli. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Magoo. Um... Wow. Okay. Hmm. There is a bit there to digest. Um. <sighs> okay. So it's going after it's it's taking item zero, right? As a YAML node. It's converting it into a scalar. It's converting the key into a scalar. Okay. And I th think that's what I'm doing here. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it didn't work. All right, let's go back here one more time. I'm going to put a breakpoint in here because I want to see it actually 
hammer through this thing right here. So let's debug one more time. And let's see what we can find. Okay. So now I'll step in with F11. So N, I, this is literally the one I want, right? N key is YAML scalar node. Yes. So that should pass. And uh, the dot value, app settings, good. Oh, I don't want to check for key. I want to check for app settings for the section name. I want to get the section, not the key. Ha ha! Eureka! So with that change, we're further. Not fixed yet. We're almost there. Because I'm not returning any content yet. Look at the output. Hmm. Hmm. Let's, um... Do, 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 do. Let's debug again. Right? Where is it? Well, actually... Run it. Like, I expect it to not come back. But I think that output wasn't... Ah, there we go! There we go! Okay. So, that found the right section. Oh my gosh. All right. Um, so, what I think I can do is if I change this, get value from key value pair. Right, I should be able, can I simplify this? Let's do this. Right. Um, this is, when I said root node, all nodes, root node is a YAML node. So let's say YAML node, topmost node, let's default that to null. Var top, uh, Topmost node equals uh, topmost node. If it's null, we'll make it YAML doc root node. And then I should be able to do this. And that should still work. Cool. Needs this for the birdie. I think I can do this. Right, get value. And be able to specify key section node. Now section node, oh, is the key value pair. Then I need the value. Come on. Come on. So complex. Think I'll stick to any files. <laughs> I think you're onto something, but uh, why is my build failing? The value is... Yeah, it's a YAML node. Right? Section node is now a YAML node. So that should be working, right? Uh, what's my build error? The name found value doesn't exist. Oh. Uh, let's just comment that out. Yes! Oh! I think we've done it and we've reused some code oh man you learn stuff right look at that 
Look at that. So now we can do... Now I can go find a section, identify that section node, pass it in, and... All right. The joy of moving to green. I know! Ah! All right. Um... I'm not having a problem with this yet, so I'm not going to write any more code in there. It's not red. <laughs> That's fine by me. So I think with that change in place, if I go over to my samples over here, I should be able... Excuse me. I should be able to add... Let's add another new item over here. Make this a text doc. Call this, what did, what did I reference it? Section YAML. Okay. And um, section YAML, one, two, three. The section is app settings. Haha, <laughs> two spaces, right? Um, and in here, I want to put a, uh, uh, well, simple two goes through setting four. So I will call that, you know what, let's call this section setting one, value one. And we'll call this section setting two, value two. Now, if everything's been done right, I should be able to run this. What? No, that's fine. Uh, ta -da 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 -da, debug start, and I should get my section settings coming out also. Did not. Bin debug. Oh, we made this mistake last time also. Section, we need to look at the properties of this thing, and we need to say, yes, copy to the output folder. Does it support erase? Shut up. <laughs> um. Now, now you're getting crazy. We'll, we'll, one step at a time. <laughs> Does it support strongly typed objects? Oh, unable to cast object of type YAML mapping node to scalar node. Now I've done it. Um... <laughs> Okay, what's my YAML doc look like here? Which one am I doing? Okay, this is the section setting, so it's blowing up on my integration test, which also tells me... Hmm, does it have the section here? What's it have for the section? Yeah, app settings, okay. So get all of... This is not the... This doesn't. This isn't doing the, the fork yet. This isn't the version that I just built. That it's looking at in there, right? Oh no no. I was in get all values. Hmm. I found my bug. I found my bug that I that right. We were saying ah, we're not going to write that yet. Copy the new YAML file to output. Now, it, well, that was my last problem that I was having. This time, right, I need to be able to read all of the values. And the read all, get all values is... Well, I'm only referring to a section. So if I am referring to a section, I want to find that mapping node. Right, because that's what I did down here. Da, 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 da. I want to find, right, the children of the root, and then go grab that. No worries. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's let's do that up here and get all values. Let's say. I think we can get through this quickly. 
So matching node, it isn't actually doing anything with. Right. Let's build a unit test to exercise and show this problem. So over here in when section configured, Uh, this is a test public void should uh, read all values from only the section arrange act assert fantastic now my program that my sample has is just going through configuration manager app settings all keys and spit these things out. I have to start streaming one hour earlier. It messes up dinner. <laughs> or one hour later. Um, let's see here. So this is kind of what I want it to do in this test. So let's just paste that in there for right now. I need to set up the actual configuration here. So let's initialize it here and then I need to actually process that configuration now here's where I'm going and saying go get all keys so the keys that I'm getting from my sections YAML because I'm <clears throat> only requesting app settings I should get two values I should get setting one setting two blah 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 all right so let's do that. Let's do that assert. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, there's Brendan. Um, grab what you coded on the other method and instead of where, just return all values there. Yeah, doesn't interfere with my morning. If you stream later, it mess with my lunch. And since you're in my time zone, I think you can agree. Yep. Um, all right. Let's do this last little bit here. I'm just going to do this this assert to check that these things exist. I know that there's two there. So let's say assert are equal to keys dot count. Uh, did not find both keys. I hate it when I lose my keys. Yep, there we go. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> now I'm going to have everybody saying, oh, you should start it this time and that time and this time. Um, all right, let's see. So I've initialized it. I've grabbed the keys and it, and it only finds one key. First off, it didn't error out. Why didn't it error out? That's weird. Right, because it errored out over here. Oh wait, that's system any. I grabbed the wrong one. I want that one. Oh, it's the same one. 24 hour stream. That might be a goal at some point. Not yet. Um, all right, so that's the same, but this, Let's see here. Let's restart this and see where it blows up. All right. Very funny. <laughs> I see everybody there in the chat room saying, do it. 24 hours. Rock on. <laughs> Might piss my wife off. Something fierce to be on here for 24 hours. Going to need to bring guests in to keep me awake throughout the, throughout the day. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe we set that for the goal for 1,500 followers. Uh, party on card. <laughs> well, let's get to 500 followers first, and then we'll talk about the next set of goals. Uh, <laughs> I've opened a can of worms. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I appreciate the support. I really do. Uh, let's see here. So... Um, this is funny that it errors out here, right? But it doesn't error out in the unit test, right? Um, no, not that one. Where are we looking at here? Optional is true. 
What's the location? Right, this is the section file. It has a section. Um, marathon stream with guests fixing Karnak. <laughs> well played. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, actually, actually, I've been talking to my friend uh, uh, Jesse Liberty about doing a Xamarin form stream. Um, and talking about um, adding some features so that we can control things like the stream tools from our phone. That might be a lot of fun to do on a, on a marathon stream. I need to find somebody who's really good with WPF to, to work on Karnak with me on stream. That might be fun. Um, might, uh, you, know who I could you know who I could recruit? I could grab my old buddy, Michael Crump. I wonder if he'd be interested. Hmm. 24 hours to the perfect amount of time to learn ASP from what I understand. Yes, I've heard that too. <laughs> Nobody is good at WPF. Oh man, come on now. So I'm not I'm not quite sure why it's this is erroring out. Why this is erroring out here. Right? For each map node in entry. New key value pair. Map node key is app settings. Oh, map node the value isn't a scalar node. It's that collection. But why didn't that why isn't get all values erroring out for me when I'm running in the unit test, right? Because I'm running the same thing in the unit test. Not this one. Here. Should read all values. So there's my app settings section. Location tag, and I'm getting app settings. And is there something else in that app config that I'm not replicating? Oh. I gotta set the mode equals greedy. That's what I'm missing. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah. So let's mode greedy. Oops. That that should break it now pretty good. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now we can figure out what's breaking this. Check if it's casting and what type it's casting to. Yes. All that casting makes me wonder if the API is usable. It makes me wonder if the API is a pain in the neck. <laughs> I see you guys there trying to push me on the book on on the book content. Uh let's see here. So it's erroring out here because the value node is not a scalar node. It's it's actually I forget what type. So what I think I want to do is I want to take a look at my mapping node, and I don't just want to say where it's a mapping type. But I think I also want to say where, let's just throw an if in here. If ugh, YAML scalar node map node dot value is uh, scalar node. Then do that. Let's see, that should work. Hmm. Didn't quite like that. YAML scalar node on the map node dot value. The value is a YAML node. So if it is a scalar node, hmm, let's run this test. Let's debug into it. Let's see what's happening right there. Um, and I feel like I, I'd love to have these things as generics to be able to, to grab these as a type. Map node value. Okay, so map node value node type is a mapping type so it should not step into this 
Unable to cast object. Mapping node to scalar node. Well, no crap. That's why I said is. Let's see. Joe Bun has a sample here. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's their sample. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Root node. He's casting it instead of a var map node. Let's see if we can simplify this just a smidge. YAML mapping node. Right, so that I get it in the right type. Now, why is that for each? Why didn't you declare a value after the is YAML scaml YAML? Whew. Let's hang on. I think I almost want to do pattern matching here. What if you set a variable like node equals map node dot value as this can save you? Yes, that's it. Um so var entry in mapping nodes. So this is a collection of mapping nodes. So if I explicitly call it that. Oh, it doesn't like that I'm using var there. Oh, that's, you know what, that's fine. Um, so yeah, if I do pattern matching here. Right, so if I say for var map node in entry, right? Map node is a key value pair of those. And if I do this as, right, key value, if, well, is it gonna be all right doing key value pair YAML scalar node, YAML scalar node, right? I think it's gonna choke on that. Yeah, it's not gonna be able to do that. Um, so, so if I did it here, um, right, because this, this value is, it, that should work, right? Just add a variable name to my if. I'm blanking here on what that syntax is on that if. Add a type to the end of it. Where is it? Oh, oh, so if I call, if I do that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, oh crap, I'm running over. Alright, let's see if we can fix this and log this down. 24 hour stream. Stop it! <laughs> um, so if the value is that, then what I should be able to do is, right, replace this uh, uh, all the way down to there with S. Right? Uh, s dot value. Oh, I'm missing a one more of those. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did not find both keys. So now I'm almost there. I don't have the the thing breaking anymore. The doodad breaking. But that was a great example of using pattern matching there, and I completely forgot you could do it. And it'd been too long since I'd actually done it. All right, so now let's fix finding both keys because right now all it sees is that top level app settings. So let's get that fixed, right? So I want to make sure that it finds both keys. Uh, so over here, when it's doing this, 
Okay, so let's create, let's call this top node. Yeah. All right. And, and this is weird because, uh, let's say string is null or empty section. So if, if the, if I don't have a section, then I want to start from the YAML doc root node. Otherwise, I want to start from YAML doc root node, but I want to get that as a mapping node. Hmm. Uh, let's put some carriage returns in here so we can make this a little bit more readable. Excuse me. Um, da, 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 that. Children. First or default. Where the key value pair. Um, the key. Which is. Okay, I want to do. Uh, uh, I want to do that as a scalar node. Scalar. Fantastic. Uh, dot value equals uh, section. Lots of red lines. Cannot be terminated because no implicit conversion between YAML node and... Okay, so that's the first or default. I need to grab... Uh, All right, so that's the first child. I want to grab, um, yeah, the key is what I, the value is the, yeah, I want the key to be returned, right? Still didn't work, all right. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, oh, because I didn't replace that yet. Okay, getting somewhere. Crazy, crazy useful in filters in ASP. Yes. All right. Let's pause right here and let's do the debug. And I know that's kind of behind my uh, my head. It's not too bad. <clears throat> All right. So top node now it is app settings. So it did find the right one. So I'm going to say top node app settings all nodes. Right, so this should just be my two underneath of it. No. I don't want all nodes. I want children. Right, if I say top nodes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I want dot children. Yeah, uh, da, 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 da. can we change this to an n dot is mapping? Does that still work? Okay, so I think instead of saying all node, I think I want top node, right, to be a mapping node. Right, so top node, it's still a YAML node. Uh, line 76 shouldn't end with key. Line 76. Um, hmm. So that is... Well, hang on, let's... Take a look at that one. All right, so we're going to find, right, this is, okay, that's a YAML node coming out. So let's say as mapping node. Okay, so then I should be able to say children here, and that should still work. Eh, no. Hmm. Do I want to say... 
Hmm. Okay, hang on. This is really ugly and unreadable, and I'm not thrilled with it. Let's do this. If um, not string dot is null or empty section, and then we'll do this ugly parsing here. Top node equals. Okay, so that finds the section. Gotta go. All right. Catch you later, Mr. Magoo. Let's, um, you know what? What do I do down here? Root node children, first or default. Right? I mean, I should be able to just say that thing. Right? If I do that? Root, um, do, 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 do. Heck, I can even um, as mapping node. Let's do that. Equals section. Oop, forgot a semi. Now it's really bad. Oh boy. Uh, what did I break? What did I break? Alright, comment these out. What? Because... Nope. Gosh, I broke... I broke all the stuff down below now, too. What other tests did I, did I break them in? No, we're good. It's only this one. Oh, it's actually getting down into that. It's actually getting... Did not find both keys. Didn't find any. All right. All right. Um, so if I comment those out, let it run again. It only found one. Now... Let's uh, let's debug and see where it is at this point. See what it's choking on. So top node is right. And if I look at top node all nodes results, that looks like I'm there. Okay, so let's step in. So mapping nodes. There should be two of these. Nope, there's a zero with. Um, I feel like I want to get the this values children, right? Top node, I want to get its... Ch top node, I want to get top node as a mapping node because then I have children and I can iterate over those. Right, root node is a mapping node also. So I should be able to say... Right, if I... If... If I say YAML mapping node. As mapping node. Now it's a... Once the var... All right, so that's a mapping node. Okay, so this needs to be cast to a mapping node. Okay. So now instead of that, I should be able to say top node dot children. Okay. Uh, should read all values from only, should add missing app settings. Well, that's blowing up now too. 
All right. Um, now I've done it. It's getting down to... Okay, hang on. Uh, all right, let's hit the debugger. Let's see what that thing is. Because at the point that I'm looking at the children, right? That's a collection. Uh, thank you, Tony. I appreciate the hosting. But we're going to be wrapping up here in just a few minutes. Um, so each one of these... So what is my zero with item there? It's a key, it's a value, it's just a key value pair. Right? Children is... It's not telling me what children is. What is top node dot children? Uh, oh, get type. That's what I want. You can't see it behind my head. I'm. My apologies. I'm running a get type here to see what this returns, and it's indicating it is a dictionary. <gasps> well, there you go. Right. This is looking for a collection of key value pair. I should be able to just say. Well, screw all that. Let's... Here we go. Right? Can I just do this? Right? Because that's a dictionary of YAML node and YAML node. See that? Okay. So we can't do that. Uh, control Z. All right. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So this is a dictionary of YAML node, YAML node. So what we should be able to do then is, all right, so instead of this, let's try doing, and I'm going to comment this one out just for right now. Can we just do return top node children? Can I do a cast? No. Um, I can do a select. Right. So, um, so each child node, I could say, uh, is it? Right, uh, new key value pair. And then the two entries are gonna be uh, um, key, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do value, am I? Ugh. Let's do this. Come here. Go to the end of that. Value. And then do the exact same thing here. Except instead of C key, it is C value. Right. There's the end of that. There's the end of that. No, well, let me select that out as a I enumerable of. Needs to be an I collection, not just an I enumerable. Glad I don't have to explain all of this in the block. Yeah, I know. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, can I do a two dictionary on that? I need to specify key and key value pair string string. Oh, dear lord. Uh, 
Uh, what if I did two lists? Ooh. Okay. Much better. That type is so simple. Yeah, I know. Shut up. <laughs> um, not did not find both keys. All right. So now when I come back through, I, I fixed the other one. That other one worked great. So let's debug and look at this. So when I'm coming through and I'm hitting this, right, my, this time, if I say top node children, I, but wait, that's setting one value one. Yeah, those are my section ones. Okay. Good. So why is that only returning one? Did not find both keys. Where's that coming from? Mm. Something doesn't feel right here. Try again, rerun all my tests. Okay, so now it's telling me that it doesn't, f it only found, it didn't find any. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All right, debug. Okay, so top node has children count of two. Top node is <laughs> right root node is all the way up at the top with app settings and it has setting one value one setting two value two okay so i am finding the appropriate section why is it when i do top node dot children right evaluate that and then if i can't get this to work i'm gonna have to bail on it for right now and come back later holy guacamole okay hang on these values okay so right now C the C item has two scalar nodes okay the value is setting one. Oh, I'm grabbing value for both of them. Oh, no, 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 that's right, that's right. Setting one, there we go, value one. Okay, so that's right. And then it's adding a second one, setting two, value two. Okay. So it's returning that as a list. Okay. So we've completely processed it. We're gonna go into app settings, all keys, and that has Zero. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm not applying it to the right process configuration setting app settings. Um, there's something I'm missing here in how I'm actually applying this. No, that's not it. What was the other one? <clears throat> App settings, settings, count. Right. Oh, I'm. Look at that. That's not going to find it because app settings, settings, and all keys. There we go. I was testing on the wrong thing. There we go. So now that all works. And now if I go back over to my sample over here and I run this, I should now be able to manage and deploy those settings back and forth between different sections just by adding the section attribute. 
fantastic. And then we can delete some code too. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Section settings up here. That was easy. Yeah, I know. Okay, so I'm going to delete all this extra code that I don't need. And I love that I'm going to get immediate feedback that I didn't break anything. Let's run all my tests. 17 should come through all working. Fantastic. All green. Let's ship it. So back over here. Let's take a look at those files that I added. So I added sections YAML a couple times here for testing and for my samples. That's fine. Test YAML sections YAML and my when and git add samples samples yaml section all right um so we completed um section selection for a YAML file. Fantastic. I feel like I need that also for an any file. Did I do it for an any file also? No. I think for an any file, actually, I concatenated the section names. I may need to revisit that. I may be missing similar features between the two. All right, so that's pushed up. Um, let's get rid of that and that. All right. So now support mapping sections to it. Yep. So I think we've got it. I've met all of the features. Now need to write some docs for this. All right check the sample to see how to use a YAML section. I'm only supporting top level. Sections for now. All right. I think that does it for that. Add to LinkedIn YAML expert. No. No, no. Um, but I think we will call this a an, an initial build of it. But it's 1230. I am at the end of the time that I have here for us. Um, right? Let me just... i got to check my schedule here. Make sure that I'm not completely messing up. No, we're good. All right. Um, but I need to bail. I need to cut out. Thank you, everybody, who's joined me here today. Um, we went through and we did a lot. We worked through, and, and I think I think I've got my hands around working with that YAML library. I think I've got that working a little bit better. Um, I think we still need to cut a a new feature here, a new feature build of configuration builders. I'll do that offline a little bit later. Um, there's nothing too exciting to see about that, but I think this branch is pretty well done. Um, so yeah, I think we'll. We'll kill that off and get everything merged up there. Um, we wrote some great unit tests on it, and it helped me find and delete some code here that was just ugly. Um, but I think we're—I think that's a wrap for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. We are at 468 followers. Let's get 32 more. Let's get to that—that that goal, that ASP.NET Core workshop. I am really looking forward to hosting that for you. Um, I'll put the I'll I'll put the recording of this over on YouTube, and uh, I'll have some updates on the blog for you a little bit later. All right. I had no idea the complexity involved in putting a bar on the screen with a number. <laughs> well, I did something a little bit more complex with that. I hope you know you you, you can just th there are tools that are out there to, that are available, and you can do something much simpler. But we did something a little bit more complex for this, so. Um, but thanks for joining us, y'all. I, I appreciate you hanging out in the chat room today. So uh, take care, everyone. Saturday morning, I'll see you then.